Welcome to educator.com and today's lessons we're going to cover containers. In particular, we're going to cover a certain type of container called a vector. Now, so we're going to cover containers. There. It's a data structure that holds data for you that you can put data in, you can take the data out, do various things with it. And there's different kinds of containers. In particular, this lesson, we're going to cover vectors. There are other types of containers we'll cover in another class. So we're going to show you how to declare a vector to contain a certain data type. Uh, we're going to access the data in the vector. We're going to add data to the end of the vector. And if necessary, the vector will, will grow to accommodate your new data. We'll get information about the vector. How big is it? That sort of thing. How much how big can it be will change the vector specifics such as capacity we'll say we need this vector to hold more we will learn about an iterator um, it's a type of object that iterates through the elements you know one two three four we want this element the next element etc we can also use those iterators to do different things like we want to copy these from this iterator to this iterator from that vector and put them into a different vector or we want to take from this iterator to this iterator and erase those elements out of that vector or we can insert into the middle and if necessary we'll allocate memory and move the data over to accommodate the new data and how to initialize a vector at compile time all right, there's different types of containers, all kinds of different types. We're going to cover a few. Today we're covering the vector, which is essentially an array, but it's specifically a dynamic array whose size can change as necessary. Unlike an array, a regular standard array, you say, okay, here's 27 objects. This is my array. You need 30 objects, you're stuck. With the vector, you say, we need 30 objects. Fine, we'll stick in 30 objects. We need to allocate more memory, we'll go allocate more memory. What we'll cover in the next lesson are things like lists, set, maps. The thing about a list as opposed to a vector, you can do sequential access, but you can also insert data into the middle quickly. Uh, whereas a vector, it depends. You put it in the middle, it's got to take from the middle to the end, it's got to move it over. That takes time. List, stick it in the middle, it doesn't matter same amount of speed no matter where you put it at the beginning at the end in the middle which is the advantage of a list a set and a map you have faster access so you can have a key um, it's like looking up something in a dictionary you have you want to look up the word boat well you move to the B section and, and then from the B section you move to the O section B O and then B O A T and then you can find it quickly you don't have to start at the beginning of the dictionary at um, Albuquerque and then go word by word by word until you find it with an array that's what you have to do you start at the beginning and you keep going one at a time until you find it so a vector or an array is not very fast for access when you, you know a dictionary type look up whereas sets and maps give you the faster access we're going to talk about those in the next lesson for vector data access we will look at the ac ac the access methods for the first element, the last element, or get a specific element. We want the nth element of a, a vector. For that, a vector is very good. You cannot easily, with a list set or map, say, I want the 12th element. Whereas with a vector, 12th element, hey, here you go, 12th element, no problem. Now, iterators will be a new concept, is something where it's an, a separate object, acts like a pointer that says, okay, this is the beginning of the vector. This is the next element. This is the next element. This is the next element. So the iterator iterates through the vector from the beginning until it gets to the end. So it's an object that facilitates uh, sequential access. And we also need to get information about a vector. So there's some methods that give you data about such as its count, how many are in there, it's also called the size. There's the allocated size, how much can you put into there, etc.